Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you for joining in on our today's live broadcasting. Please let me know if my sound is loud and clear, guys. Please let me know if my sound is loud and clear. If you can hear me, please give me a one. God bless you. Thank you for your confirmation. God bless you and your loved ones. Welcome, everybody. Hope everyone is doing okay. Nice to have you on board. Today, guys, <clears throat> we're going to talk about the so-called miracles of the Quran. And in this case, today's topic is going to be about the Quranic claim about the embryology. Now, Muslims love to brag about the many scientific miracles in the Quran. Boy oh boy, we are going to expose that and we are going to show you that it's nothing but a lie and a deception. So on this live broadcast, we will have the opportunity to expose the Quranic claim about the embryo stages and show you where Muhammad actually got it from. He actually got it from a lot of other sources. Last but not least, when I finish my teaching today, we'll have a nice Q&A session with our guests in the live chat. In other words, you can ask me questions about today's teaching and I will try to answer your questions as far as I can. Hopefully we'll have also Muslims and Hopefully I will be honored with the appearance of an Imam or an Ustaz who can call us live on Skype so we can have a nice and respect respectful discussion. My Skype ID, if the admins can provide it in the chat, my Skype ID is the Rob Christian without separation. The Rob Christian. Before we start, guys, please let us pray. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, please give me strength when I'm weak and in need of your comfort. Please, Lord, guide us so we can learn to forgive others who might curse us or persecute us. Because we are followers of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Please, Lord, give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into discouragement, deception, taqiyya, or any doubt. Please, Lord, help us under you in all our ways. Lord, thank you that when I'm weak, you are strong. Lord, the devil is scheming, and I know he desires to keep us from spending time with you. Lord, thank you for your grace, and because of the ultimate sacrifice of your beloved Son, we are saved. Please give me today the courage and wisdom to overcome lies and deceptions. Help me not to lean on my own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct my words, thoughts, and actions. Please, Lord, give me the courage today to do whatever needs to be done in Jesus name we pray amen amen like I said thank you for joining in guys nice to have you on board Lord willing today is going to be another amazing teaching and live broadcasting God bless you and your families keep us in your prayers guys uh, don't forget also to keep our love, be, beloved admins in your prayers. They are doing always an amazing job. Let us start today's teaching. As a small introduction, guys, of our latest live shows, I want to show you a small video. Lately, we have having uh, some calls on Skype from Shia Muslims. And yesterday, when I was on Christian Prince, his live show, I saw that he had a really disturbing discussion with a Shia Muslim taqiyya um, guy who was lying basically during the whole discussion. So let me play a video for you guys as a small introduction. 
then we will continue ان جبرائيل وهو اعظم الملائكه لا يكون امام الزهراء عليها السلام الا عبدا امام سيدته معنى ذلك أن أنبياء الله العظام بمن فيهم الرسل أولي العزم هم أمام الزهراء يطأطئون رؤوسهم خضوعا لسيدتهم ومولاتهم Guys, did you catch it? How Shia actually worship the family of Muhammad? Let us continue. سيدة النساء يقاس بفاطمة أحب هيهاب 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 كما يقول إمامنا الصادق عليه السلام لم تتم نبوة نبيا في الأضلة حتى أقر بالفضل لأمي فاطمة وعلى معرفتها دارة القرون الأولى كل شيء يعقول الأنبياء والأولياء يقول لما رفع رأسه بأمر من جبرائيل أرفع رأسك يا آدم إلى السماء رفع رأسه إلى السماء ماذا ترى وإذ يرى أنوارا محدقة حول العرش حول عرش الله هذا عرش الله بلا تشبيه أنوار محدقة حول العرش إلهي ما هذه الأنوار قال هذه الأنوار هم فاطمة الله الله شوف الرحة شوف الأساس الله يعرف الكل بفاطمة الزهراء ما قال رسول الله وابنته فاطمة قال فاطمة وأبوها توجهت له لا مولانا شوف التعريف شوف المعرف والمعرف شوف عظمة الزهراء يقولون هذا فلان ابن من هذا منه هذا الرجال يقولون هذا ابن حج فلان يعني يعرفون الولد بمن بصيت أبوه يعرفون الولد بأبيه ولمرن في بعض الأوقات لا لا يعرفون الأب بالولد عمي هذا يا هو يقولوا له هذا أب فلان ها يعني يعرفون الأب بمن بالولد شو تقول قال له ما هذا قال له هذه الأنوار هم فاطمة وأبوها ما قال رسول الله وابنته فاطمة لا 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 قال فاطمة الله عرف عرف الرسول بالزهراء شوف خلى الزهراء هي الأصل اللهم صل على فاطمة وأبيها وبعدها اللهم صل على فاطمة وأبيها اللهم صل على فاطمة وأبيها الحديث ما قال فاطمة ومحمد وعلي وحسن وحسين قال فاطمة وأبوها نسبه إليها وبعلها نسبه إليها وبنوها يعني كانت هي المحور يعني كانت هي الأهم يعني كانت هي الأولى أمكما تحتقي الميزان وأمكما لساء هي التي تشير إلى الأشياء وإلى المواضع أين طوبع وأعمال الخضائق تسند إلى حسن وحسين Guys, Fatima is the so-called daughter of Muhammad She is actually the daughter of Khadija, right? So as you see guys, I don't want to play the whole video for you, but as you see, Shia actually worship Fatima and they place her even higher than Jibreel, right? And according to these Shia Imams, these are Shia, right? Muhammad needs to ask permission from his own daughter to enter Jannah. <laughs> Lord have mercy, right? So. The daughter of Muhammad is on a higher level than Muhammad and is even higher than Jibreel himself. These are the 10% of the Islamic world, guys. These are Shia Imams. And those are the same Shia Imams, guys, that allow Mut'a, they are pimps, they are pimping out little Muslim girls for a small amount of money so you can have Mut'a sex prostitution with the Muslim girls for let's say one hour, right? These are the same Imams that allow Mut'a. I mean, you watch the BBC Mut'a prostitution 
marriage, right? That documentary that is going all over the world right now. These are the same imams, the nasty pimps, right? So you, you just witnessed, guys, together with me, that they are actually worshipping Fatima. Not only Fatima, the whole house of Muhammad, right? Which they call Ahlul Bayt. They are worshipping them, right? So what about the Quran, guys? What about the rest of the Muslims? For example, the rest of the uh, Sunni Islamic world, right? What about all the Muslims? What about the Shiyukh? What about the Shiyukh? What do they say? If we go to the Quran, guys. Chapter 48, Ayah 9. I hope everyone is seeing the screen in front of you. This is chapter 48, Surah Al-Fatih. Chapter 48, Ayah 9. Let me read the Arabic for you first. لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ so if we go to the translation, we can read the following. That you, may, mankind, may believe in Allah and His Messenger, and may honor Him, and may revere or assist Him, and may glorify Him at early dawn and the close of day. So every morning and evening. Now, According to Arabic grammar rules, guys, the last person, which is in this case Muhammad, the Rasul, right, the messenger, every word that comes after the last person, which is in this case Muhammad, every word that comes after is addressed to Muhammad, right? So, to honor him, to assist him in battle, let's say, and to glorify him who? To glorify the Rasul, the messenger. Did you catch it? So all the Muslims are commanded in the Quran to glorify Tasbih, glorify the Rasul, which is in this case Muhammad. So we know that glorification is an act of worship. So we showed you guys how the Shia worship the family of Muhammad but according to the Quran, every Muslim has to glorify the Rasul, the Messenger. You see how Muslims have to worship Muhammad? And the proof is in front of you, right? So when we ask our lovely Imams and Shaykhs, the scholars of Islam, what is your answer about this? You know what they will say? They will say the following, guys. Right. So that's their answer, guys. What can we do? That is their answer when we ask them this question. This is their answer, guys. I mean, till now, I've been discussing this ayah. For the last, let's say, three days, no imam has had the courage to call me and to refute me. Where are the imams to call me about this ayah to refute me, claiming that the Quran is commanding Muslims to glorify Muhammad? This is nothing but a pagan cult, guys. Islam is nothing but a pagan cult. And the proof is in front of you. Now, let us go to back to our today's teaching, guys. All right, let us go back. That was a nice small introduction for our latest live shows. Now, like we said, the Quran claims or makes some claims about the embryo stages for let's say, a child to be born in the belly of his mother. <clears throat> now, if we go to the Quran, if we go to the Quran, and if we find just one error, guys, if we just find one error in the book of Allah, which is the Quran, then that means Quran is not from God, right? Do you agree with me? Anyone in the text? If we just can find one error in the Quran, 
What, just one? That means the Quran is from, it's not from God, right? Because how can God else make mistakes? How many people agree with me and can give me a one in a text if we just find one error? That means the Quran is nothing but a garbage book that we can throw in the bin, right? We can throw it away. Because Muslims have always claimed this is from God. So if we can find one error, that means we can big, put a big red cross on top of the Quran. Okay, so it seems that a lot of people in the chat do agree that if we find just one error, that means we can throw away the Quran of Allah. So if we go to the Quran, guys, if we go to the Quran and we go to chapter Al Mu'minun, chapter 23, ayah 14, and we can read the following. And today, guys, I want to go to a very specific claim that Muhammad makes in the Quran. So it's talking about. A, that Allah is fashioned the drop, the drop which is uh, semen basically, and then it's made in the cloth, in blood cloth. Then we fashioned, then fashioned we the cloth a little lump. Then, so lump of flesh. Then fashioned we the little lump which is flesh, bones. So Allah creates bones. Then, then clothe the bones with flesh. So this last part that I want today to address guys. So according to the Quran, pay attention guys. According to the Quran, according to the Quran, bones are created first, then the bones are covered with flesh. Did you catch it? This very part I want to address and for a few today. We're going to refute Allah's claim we know, Muhammad, you know, it's Muhammad fabricating those ayahs. There's nothing called Allah. But today we're going to destroy this claim. So we are going to put a big cross on this ayah. Right? What did we say? If we can find one error, that means the Quran is not from God. We can throw the Quran away in the garbage bin. Right? I have a question to the Muslims. What happened with the egg? Was Allah hungry? I mean, Allah, where is the egg? Allah, why didn't you mention the egg in that ayah? I think, guys, Allah was so hungry, he ate the egg of the woman. But, you know, let it go, let it go. That's a topic for another time. Right? So we are going to address the fact that Allah, or in this case, Muhammad, making the claims that bones are covered with flesh. So first the bones come, come and then the flesh is covering the bones, right? Let us start, guys. So the Quran claims bones are created first, then bones are covered in flesh, with flesh, right? Now, Muslims and Christians and other friends who joined in, is this claim true? Is this claim true? Welcome everybody who just joined in. Thank you. God bless you for your support. I think today is a really amazing topic because we are going to go very deep, guys. We are going to go very deep to see if the Quranic claim is true. So again, for the people who just joined in, the Quran claims that bones are created first, then, then, Bones are covered in flesh. Is this true? Is the Quran true about this claim? Let us start basically the teaching, guys. Now, 20, 2,500 years ago, guys, 2,500 years ago, so that means a thousand years before Islam, there was a guy called Hippocrates. Hippocrates, right? This guy claimed 25 hundred years ago that an embryo develops in four stages, right? So this guy was a Greek scientist. He was a really famous scientist of his time. That was 2,500 years ago. And he claimed that the embryo develops in four stages. According to Hippocrates, the sperm of the male and the female is needed to create basically an embryo or a child, right? 
then congealed blood of the mother is created from that moment on, right? So the sperm of the male and the female becomes congealed blood. Congealed blood means dead blood, dead frozen blood, right guys? Then the flesh begins to be formed. So according to this guy, stage three is flesh begins to be formed. Then stage four, the bones start to develop later, right? He was one of the first guys who started to make a study about this. Then later, guys, later, 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 this guy comes in place. So 100 years later, after him, after this guy, 100 years later, a guy named Aristotle came to play a hundred years later, so that's 2,400 years ago, 900 years before Islam was created by Muhammad, a guy named Aristotle claims, he's another Greek scientist, claims hundred years later that hypocrites was wrong, and this guy now claims hypocrites was wrong. Bones do not come after the flesh, right? Bones do not come after the flesh. Flesh grows later around the bones, according to Aristotle, 100 years after Hippocrates, right? That's his claim. That's what he said, right? This is 900 years before Islam. Then after this guy, after Aristotle, another Greek scientist comes to play and he says 1900 years ago, that's 500 years before Islam, Pay attention, guys, and this guy is very important now. So remember the name Galen, okay? Remember the name Galen. Pay attention, guys. So 500 years before Islam, this guy comes, another Greek scientist, saying and claiming that both Hippocrates and Aristotle are wrong. So according to the Galen, both Aristotle and Hippocrates are wrong, right? And what does he say? What does, Gal what does Galen say? Water of the man and woman is needed. Pay attention, guys. Water of the man and woman are needed to create an embryo. The menstrual blood, so then the water of the man and the woman turns into menstrual blood, congealed blood, right? According to this guy, according to Galen. Then you get the enshaped flesh, which Muslims call in the Quran lump, a lump of flesh, right? A lump of flesh. Then this lump of flesh turns into bones first. So immediately the bones after are getting developed first. Then stage five, according to Galen, flesh then grows around the bones. Did you catch it? So according to this guy, According to Galen, before Islam, 500 years before Islam, flesh then grows around the bones, right? Now pay attention from now on, guys. This is very important stuff. I think you don't see many videos like this, right, guys? Not many people talk about this. This is why this is so important. So if we continue, remember the name Galen, if we continue, about 26 books, written by Galen, this guy, right? He wrote 26 books, were translated by a man named Sergius of Rashaina, right? He was an Aramaic speaking translator. So he translated this guy, he translated 26 books written by Galen. And as you see here, this is the translated work of our friend Sergius. And that's in the sixth century. Now take a note, that means Galen's work is now translated from Greek. Remember, Galen was a Greek scientist. So Sergius translated the work of Galen from Greek to Aramaic, right? Now why, what's happening here, guys? So here we have finally translated Greek word from Galen to Aramaic. And we know that the Aramaic books used to circle around the Mediterranean Sea in the 6th century, 7th century, 8th century, right? That's in the time of Muhammad. So 
Finally, Greek study, Greek work, scientific work started to be translated and spread around the Mediterranean Sea. So that means all the countries basically around the Mediterranean, right? Did you catch it? Guys, are you still with me? Are you still with me? I know this is very deep stuff. I put a lot of time and work in this study, guys. So I hope you are paying attention because you know how much work this is, guys, right? So finally, Galen's work is now translated from Greek to Aramaic and is now circling basically the Arabic Peninsula, right? The Mediterranean Sea, all the countries around the Mediterranean Sea. So it reached also, and we're going to prove it to you, Mecca, Medina, and whatnot, right? So the work of Galen. So if you keep continuing, this Sergius, who translated the work of Galen, guys, was a Nestorian. He was a Nestorian. He was a Christian Nestorian. And at that time, because there was a lot of confusion about the Nestorian church, this church, the Nestorian church, was under persecution, right? So Sergius, as a Nestorian, was under heavy persecution. So what did this guy do? He had to take measures and he wanted to flee his country, right? So he went from here to Persia, right? So he took his family, guys. Sergius took his family and friends with him and his translations, including Galen's work, and then fled to Persia. So he went from here to there. You see, this is Persia, right? So he went to Persia and he started to live here. Right? So he took the work of Galen, the translated work of Galen, with him. So people started to have access to the work of Galen, translated by Sergius. Right? Are you with me, guys? Are you with me? Now, from here on, a lot of important things started to develop. Right? So this guy went to Persia and he went to a city called Yundishapur. So there was a medical school in Yundishapur, right? So many people have been graduated from this school, right? In Yundishapur, right? Including a doctor named Al-Harith Ibn Qallada. Another, he's also called Ibn Qalda. Al-Harith Ibn Qallada or Ibn Qalda, right? Remember the name, Al-Harith Ibn Qallada or Qalda. So this, this guy, what, what is, who is this guy? He is basically a doctor, right? He is studying in the medical school in Persia, right? This is Persia, the same place where Sergius went to. Do you see it? So the work, translated work of Galen, guys, pay attention. The translated work of Galen is now very famous and well known in this medical school in Jundishapur in Persia, which is nowadays Iran. Iran, right? Iran is Persia. So now who is this Al-Harith Ibn Qalda exactly? Who is this guy? If we go to Prophet Google, peace be upon him, and we look him up, this is Al-Harith Ibn Qalada or Qalda. He is a guy who lived basically in the 13th year after Hijra, the year 634-35, was an Arabic phys uh, physician and a doctor and a companion of the Islamic prophet. So this guy, this guy, right, became the companion of Muhammad. Did you catch it? And he studied the material of Galen, right? Did you catch it? So he got his study from this guy, from Galen, right? In that very famous school, as we mentioned, in the Jundishapur city. And there he studied and got his degree, medical degree, right? So this guy becomes the companion of Muhammad, the Sahabi of Muhammad. He is said to have traveled to Gandhishapur, right? Same city. 
Jundi Shapur or Gandhi Shapur in search of medical knowledge before the advent of Islam. Right? So before he became a Muslim, guys, Ibn Al-Harith Al Ibn Qalda or Qallada studied medicine in the same school and read what Galen said about the embryo stages. Guys, are you still with me? Are you still with me, guys? Give me one if you're still with me. So this companion of Muhammad studied the medicine, studied medicine in the same school and read what Galen said about the embryo stages. After graduation, after graduation, so he got his medical degree in medicine, Al-Harith ibn Qallada or Qalda goes to Mecca and became one of the companions of the Prophet of Islam, aka also known as Muhammad. Aha! <laughs> Did you catch it? Now, later Al Harith ibn Qallada or Qalda even married the aunt of Muhammad, of the Prophet of Islam, and lived with Muhammad for 20 years. For, so, for two decades, he became the companion of Muhammad. Uh oh! Now, let's see what happens, guys. Okay, 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 okay. Right? Okay, guys. Now that we know that historically speaking, the Quran was not the first to mention these so-called embryo stages of Galen, right? Right? If we go back, guys, what did Galen say? Bones develop first, flesh then grows around the bones, right? Flesh then grows around the bones. What did the Quran say? Oh, what did the Quran say? We, from the lump of flesh, the bones are created, then clothe the bones with flesh. Did you catch it? Same study of Galen. So first the bones, first the bones, then the flesh covers the bones, right? So the Quran is not the, one, the first one to mention this because Galen came before the Quran, right? Galen came before the Quran was revealed to Muhammad. But here's the question, the one million dollar question, the one million dollar question, guys. Are these stages scientifically true or not? Muslims. And Christians who are listening and watching, are the stages that are mentioned by Galen and the Quran, are they true or not? Someone is saying not. So science, according to the audience who are listening and watching, science does not agree with Galen's work. Well, let us see if this is true or not. Right? Now we need to ask ourselves the following question. Was Galen right or wrong? Was he right or wrong? Right? Because the same what he says is to be found in the Quran. Right? And we know that his work, like we mentioned earlier, his work was translated and was now circling around the Arabic Peninsula. Right? And we know, as we mentioned, Al-Harith, right? Ibn Qalda became also a companion of Muhammad. So, I think you are noticing something fishy here, right guys? Right? Where does the Quran got this idea from that the first the bones are being developed and then the flesh covers the bones? We know the Quran, Muhammad got it from this guy, right? Uh, Galen was wrong. Uh oh. Galen was wrong, guys. Galen was wrong, right? So the Quran is nothing but a copy paste from this guy, from Galen. So if Galen is wrong, the Quran is wrong. Uh oh. If Galen is wrong, the Quran is wrong. Right? 
because he makes the same claim. He says, first the bones are being developed and then the bones are being covered by flesh. Like the Quran, right? First the bones, then the bones are being covered by flesh, right? Same claim, right? So Galen and the Quran are wrong. And here's why, guys. Let us show you why Galen and the Quran are wrong. As you see here, guys, this is the embryonic tissue. The embryonic tissue, right? And there are three major germ layers that form the embryonic disc, right? One of them is called the mesoderm. The mesoderm, right? It's the middle layer, guys. It's the middle layer. That layer develops the flesh and bones simultaneously, according to modern scientific study. So, today's modern scientific study refutes the work of Galen. So, according to today's teaching, to today's scientific study, bones are not covered from by flesh. Bones and flesh are developed at the same time, simultaneously. So the mesoderm is responsible for forming the tissues such as flesh and bones. This layer develops the flesh and bones simultaneously. Did you catch it? Did you catch it, guys? So the Quran is wrong and Galen is wrong. According to modern science. Uh-oh. And if we continue, so 1900 years ago, and that's like we said, 500 years before Islam, Galen got it wrong. Eh. Right? Galen got it wrong. And we know now where the Quran got their claims from, from this guy. <laughs> because his work was translated and circling around the Arabic Peninsula, especially the countries that are surrounding the Mediterranean Sea, right? So, newsflash to our Muslim friends. Bones and flesh are developed at the same time. Anyone uh, caring for some delicious meat, guys? With some bones? You know, this is, you know, how delicious lamb, lamb chops is. All right, guys. Anyone? So, the Quran, <laughs> the Quran of Allah is wrong. Right? The Quran of Allah is wrong. Right? The Quran, as we said, it claims that the bones come first. Then the bones get clothed by flesh, right? So, uh, uh, right? What about Dr. Keith Moore? You know how many Muslims always say, what about Dr. Keith Moore? Well, what does Dr. Keith Moore says in his book? In his book, in page 15. He says, the Quran pretty much copied from the works of Galen. This is the same kid more making this claim. Muslims, you cannot have a cake and eat it too. If you want to go to Dr. Keith Moore, this Dr. Keith Moore calls the Quran garbage. He calls it a joke. So he says, the Quran pretty much copied from the works of Galen, which came before Muhammad and Islam. Boom. So here's what we conclude. Here's what we can conclude. This sequence is scientifically wrong. That is mentioned in the Quran. Galen said these embryo stages 500 years ago before Quran. 
right? Well, Bodhi Dharma, clearly the Quran is not the best because the Quran is false. We just prove it to you. Yes, Keith Moore says that. Right? We even gave you the page number. Right? I looked this up, guys. I did some research. I put a lot of work in, this, in today's teaching, guys. You can go do your own research if you think I'm lying to you. So this is what we can show you and prove to you that actually the Quran, Muhammad, basically, there is nothing called Allah. It's Muhammad stealing from here, stealing from there, right? Remember how Muhammad was accused in the Quran to be stealing works? These are Asatir al awwalin He's accused of stealing le legend stories, works of others, right? So, Muhammad got it from this guy, and this guy was wrong, right? Galen was wrong, we showed it to you, right? Galen says, first comes the bones, and then the bones are covered with flesh, which is lie, which is a lie according to modern science. The flesh and the bones are grown simultaneously. So the Quran lied, guys. The Quran lied. So this is a nice new flesh, guys. Muslims, wake up. The Quran is lying. The Quran is wrong. Right? And stop going to, to Dr. Keith Moore. Because Dr. Keith Moore is spanking your Quran and is spanking your prophet. Right? And the proof is in front of you. So, so, Muslims, Muslim Imams, Muslim Shiyukh, question, here comes the one million dollar question. Where is the miracle in the Quran? Now the Imams will say, Right. 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 Do we have any Muslim Sheikh? Is there any Muslim Sheikh? Is there any Muslim Imam? Let me open up my Skype. Hopefully we will have a Muslim Sheikh who can refute our today's teaching. Do you have any Muslim? My Skype is open, guys. Do you have any Imam who has the knowledge and the courage to call us live on Skype? My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. The Rob Christian. Right? Call me. Silence me. Guys, did you like today's teaching? Um, Budi Dharma saying, Hey Rob, let's debate in Indonesian language if you're there. Well, first I need to learn Indonesian, Abdul. Let me, um, give me some time, give me 10 years. Give me 10 years to learn Indonesian. Then call me after 10 years and we will have a debate, no problem. You see the amazing, amazing brains of the Muslims. What a nice challenge, Abdul. Are you telling me in 2019 you can't speak English? Shame on you, man. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord of mercy. Right. Uh. 
any Muslim. Do you have any question, guys? In the people in the chat, our audience in the chat, our beloved Christians in the chat, do you have any questions? They make me Chinese of you there. <laughs> Do we have any Ustaz from Indonesia? You see guys, if you do some research, if you actually put some time and do your own research, you'll find, you'll actually find that Islam caught all their claims from here and there. All the Islamic, so-called Islamic scientific miracles in the Quran are nothing but stolen study from people like Galen, right? Stealing work of others that is translated from the Greek into Aramaic. Do you remember guys when we sh were mentioning to you how Muhammad actually was getting his Basically, his study, his, his ayahs from Warak ibn Nufl, who was translating the Injil, the Gospel, from Aramaic to Arabic. You remember the Hadith, guys? Do you remember the Hadith? Maybe our friend, uh, one, of, one of the admins, Phil, I think you can help us out. You can help the people out. You can give them the Hadith about... How Waraka says this is Namus. You remember? You remember that hadith, guys? You remember the hadith? Let me try to get it. Um, let's see. Okay, I got it for you guys, just a second. This is the hadith, guys. Or actually, there are many hadiths like this, mentioning this, right? Same story. If we, can, if we keep reading, this is Sahih Muslim. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih hadith, right? Very long hadith. If we go to the bottom, this is the reference, Sahih Muslim. Hadith number 160A. Did you catch it? Sahih Muslim, hadith number 160A. Let me scroll back and try to prove my point. So here we are, can read about how basically Muhammad was encountered by Jibreel who was squeezing him three times in that cave, Hira, right? So, when Khadija took Muhammad to her cousin, Waraka, Waraka ibn Nofal, right? He was from the family, a line of people who used to worship Al-Uzza, which is one of the three daughters of Allah, right? Allah Al-Uzza wal Manat. So, he comes from a family who used to worship Al-Uzza. So, he was the cousin of Khadija. And he became a Nasrani. There's nothing called Christianity, right? He became a Nasrani who was back then basically a Jewish slash Christian cult. He was nothing but a heretic in the days of ignorance, right? The days of ignorance is basically before Islam, i.e. before Islam. And he used to write, now pay attention, Waraka bin Nofil, the cousin of the first wife of Muhammad, the cousin of Khadija used to write books in Arabic and therefore wrote Injil in Arabic. So guys, as you see, Muhammad during his so-called prophethood, he always got sources from others to put them in the Quran. This is why he got some verses copied from the Injil, which is the gospel, right? So Waraka was helping him. Waraka was helping Muhammad in translating the gospel from Aramaic to Arabic. Did you catch it? Same, same like we mentioned from Galen, right? We told you 
that Sergius, who was an Aramaic guy, right? As you see, this is Aramaic that you see here, right? He was translating Ga Galen's work from Greek to Aramaic, right? You see that? And as we mentioned, Al-Harith, Al-Harith ibn Kalda or Kallada, he got the work from Galen. So Muhammad is nothing but a copycat, a nice copy machine stealing works from others. Boom! And the proof is in front of you. We proved it to you today to you. So the Quran got it from Galen. And Galen was wrong, right? Galen was wrong. So the Quran is wrong. Muslims, like I said, this is the million dollar question. Where is the miracle in the Quran? Any Muslim? God bless you too, Sony Tadan. Guys, if you didn't uh, come and saw today's teaching from the beginning, I recommend you to re-watch today's video, guys. Re-watch it. This is a really important video. Also, don't forget, guys, to subscribe and smash that like button. Smash it like it's possessed by jinns. And also, click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live like today. Right? You know how YouTube works by now, guys. Right? So, usually YouTube needs like, let's say, 30 minutes to process the video. Right? So, wait for 30 minutes and then rewatch it. And you can also see the live chat. So, everything that you see here on the right side, you can rewatch it also together with the live chat. Many people don't know that you can actually see the live chat again. Right? You can see it, you can see what people wrote, right? Hey, brother Hayden, God bless you. Guys, we have our dear brother Hayden, who is another amazing brother in Christ. He is also an amazing debater who used to sit together with me, together with Christian Prince on Paul Talk back in the old days. So we have a lot of amazing people who uh, who have been doing an, a lovely work, right? To expose this satanic cult who was nothing but a man-made cult made by Muhammad, stealing works of others like Galen, right? Right? And Galen, like we said, was wrong. And we showed you we showed you today that the Quran is wrong. We can throw away the Quran in the garbage bin. We can throw it away because it's nothing but a garbage book. And the proof is in front of you. The Quran claims that the bones are first developed and then the bones are covered by flesh. But according to modern science, the modern science, the layered uh, that is called the mesoderm, this layer develops the flesh and bones simultaneously. So the Quran in chapter 23, ayah 14 is wrong. Because it claims first the bones are developed, then the bones are covered with flesh. Right? So like we said, if we can find just one error, guys, like today, we just found an error. That means the Quran is not from God. Wake up, Muslims. Right? Muslims, wake up. Throw away the Quran. Throw away the key. Now, throw away the Quran and please come back home to Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Today, we smashed the Quran. We spanked the book of Allah. And we showed you that Muhammad is nothing but a copy, paste, Machine. He's a copy machine. Stealing works from here and there. Right? And in this case, the works of Galen, who was wrong. Right? 
Galen was wrong. So automatically the Quran is wrong. <laughs> Do we have any Muslim? Come on man, my Skype is open man. Are you telling me there is no Istaz who can call us live? I mean we are live guys. We have 1.8 billion Muslims. That's what they said. And no Muslim from the 1.8 billion Muslims can call us live and refute us. Call me. Refute me. Silence me. <laughs> Do we have any questions in the chat, guys? Do we have any questions about Islam or today's topic? Yeah, maybe you can convince me. Maybe I can say the Shahada and become a Muslim like you. Maybe you can show me how Muhammad did not steal the work of Galen. Right? Guys, and we showed you as an introduction, we showed you that all the Muslims have to worship Muhammad and glorify him. Glorify the messenger. So Muslims stop worshipping a dead man because we know that Muhammad is dead, laying in his grave somewhere in Medina. So why are you worshipping Muhammad, Muslims? And we, not only that, we also showed you how Shia worship Fatima and the family of Muhammad. Right. Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any question, guys? That is strange. 1.8 billion Muslims and no one can call us live to refute us? Yalla Habibi, yalla. Call me, guys. Yalla ya Habayb. Yalla ya Muslimoon. Yalla ya Muslimin, call us. Yalla yalla. Yalla bina yalla. Do we have any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge? Do we have any Ustaz? Bodhidharma, I, you know, you call yourself smart, but you can't refute today's topic. That's really strange, man. You know, how can you call yourself a, a smart Abdul and not see the problem in the Quran? Call me, silence me. This is a lie, guys. The Quran is lying. There are no miracles because if we can show you just one error and we showed you that, that means you can throw away the Quran. So now we know why Uthman was burning the Quran, guys. Because the Quran is nothing but a garbage book. And today we proved it to you. Right? Guys, I hope you are appreciating our work. I'm really doing a lot of study, not only teaching, but we study. I mean, we're all, we are all students, right? We're all students. And every day we keep learning stuff, right? No one can say, I know everything. But if you can do some research like I do, you will see, you will see that the Quran is nothing but a man-made book. Stealing works of others, right? Right? And Muhammad was accused to be copying from others. Right? In the Quran. Let me show you the ayahs, guys. Bear with me.
Any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim guys? Come on, man. Do you have any Muslim? Uh, Quran, I think in chapter four, let's see. <clears throat> One oh five, I think. Bear with me, guys. Sometimes it's really hard to find ayahs when you are looking for them, but I think I will find it during the, today's live show. Anyway, at the moment I can't find it, but I will look further later. Hey, do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Sheikh? Do we have any Imam? I mean, guys, do I really look that scary to you? We have more than 100 people watching. And we have at least one dislike. So we have at least one or two or maybe three Muslims watching. Can't you call your dad or your imam saying to him or to her, hey, there's a guy called Rob Christian. He is making Islam look like uh, a garbage. He's spanking our prophet. Is there any imam that can refute this guy? I mean, maybe silence this guy? Come on, man. And we are doing this almost every day. Guys, someone yesterday uh, uh, commented on my Facebook page. He said, Rob Christian, I love your teaching. But man, for the for Lord's sakes, stop doing live shows every day. <laughs> so this is why I decided to not do a live show yesterday after Christian Prince was finished. Some people love to watch our videos, but because there are so many videos, <laughs> there's too little time to keep up. Uh, what can we do, guys? What can we do? <laughs> what can we do? Do we have any question, guys? Yeah, guys, to be honest, guys, I have so many topics. The topics that we can address in our videos are so overwhelming. There's simply not enough time for me to talk about them. Too many topics, not enough time. Right? We really try to answer your questions, guys. I really try. I'm trying, right? But... I can split myself in half. I can't do three or four or five live shows every day, right? I love to do that, but we have our personal lives, right? But we try. Right? Is there any Muslim? Is there any Muslim? Hello? Guys, last time, last time, and I really, uh, when I love to speak about something, I want to finish it. But when I was teaching, 
someone told me that Christian Prince went live. So we ended our live show and I first, unfortunately could not finish my teaching. So I wanted to address that. Let me go to the ayah that I was teaching about because I don't want to say something and not finish what I'm saying. So I always try to remember, I always try to remember what still needs to be addressed, right? Let me go to that ayah. Chapter 4, ayah 100. 57, I think it was. Yeah. Okay. Guys, I know this is off topic, but I really need to address and fully expose here the lies of Muhammad in the Quran. Now, this is a really famous ayah, guys. This is a really famous ayah. Allah is saying, so Allah is saying that the Jews have said, it's their saying of who? Of the Jews. So Allah is saying the Jews have said, we slew the Messiah, right? So the Jews have said, we slew the Messiah. Last time I asked the Muslims, can you show me one Jew who makes the claim, we slew the Messiah? And no Muslim, no Muslim could have called in to refute me. Why is that? Show me one Jew, right? Show me one Jew who made this claim. Right? Show me one Jew in the history of all the Jews who made this claim. No Muslim can call us to refute us. So there is no Jew who ever made this claim because the Jews are still waiting for their Messiah. So how, have, how did the Jews actually make this claim? This is a lie. So here Muhammad is lying about the Jews. Because the Jews are still waiting for the Messiah. Yes, the Jews wanted Jesus dead. Who they call Isa. There's nothing, guys, there's nothing called Isa. In the Arabic, the name of Jesus is Yeshua. In the Aramaic, it's Yeshua. You catch it? Joshua. So who is Isa? We never heard of the name Isa, guys. I'm an Arabic speaker Christian. And all the Christians in the Middle East who speak Arabic, we don't call Jesus Isa. We call him Yeshua. So who is Isa? We don't know. So not only did Muhammad lie about the name of Jesus, the real Jesus, not that he lied about the Jews, but that's not only it. There is many more disasters in this ayah. Just one ayah that is lying. And what did we say, guys? If there's only one error in the Quran, Quran is garbage. It's not from God. Right? Remember? So, to continue to show you, to completely address this ayah, guys. Then if we keep continue reading. They slew him not, nor crucified him. In the Arabic, if we read it, it says, وَمَا قَتَلُهُ وَمَا صَلَبُهُ Question. Question. We know crucifixion is a Roman punishment, right guys? It's a Roman punishment. Remember, only the Romans had the authority to crucify people, right? Do you agree with me guys in the chat? Are you still with me? Huh? Are you still with me? Okay, thank you. So, can you show me one Roman in the whole history of the Romans who used to kill people? So, first you kill people, then you put them on the cross. So, according to this ayah, it says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ They did not kill him, nor crucify him. Question to the Muslims. 
Did the Romans first kill people and then put them death on the cross? You see, another lie. The Romans used to put people alive on the cross. And because of the horrendous pain and misery, it, it took them days to die on the cross. Days. Right? So, the, the Quran here again is lying. Right? Remember what we said? One error means Quran is not from God. Look how many errors are just in one ayah. Chapter 4, ayah 157. So again, here is the Quran lying about the Jews, lying about the name of Jesus, lying about the Romans. Right? And then it says, it appeared that Isa was crucified. So here Allah had no better idea than to deceive all the Christians. There are more than 2 billion Christians today in 2019 on this planet. Because of the deception of Allah, billions and billions of Christians have been deceived by Allah. So don't blame us. Blame Allah for deceiving billions and billions of Jews and Christians during the centuries. Lord have mercy. And if we, if we think carefully, you guys, if we think carefully here, think with me here. Did you remember when I said Muhammad is nothing but a copy paste machine? Did you remember that? Now, question to the audience. Question to the audience. Where do you think? Where do you think Muhammad got the idea from that Jesus, Isa in this case, was not crucified? Where do you think he got it from? From the second treatise of the great set. And the proof is in front of you. Let me try to explain myself. Guys, in the third century, in the third century, right? In the third century, are you with me, guys? Are you with me? In the 3rd century, there was an apocryphal Gnostic writing called the Second Treatise of the Grave Set. Let me give you the link. It, this writing was written by people who were Gnostics, right? So they wrote this study or this writing in the 3rd century, much later than the crucifixion of Jesus. So this material used to circle around the Mediterranean Sea in Aramaic, because that was the language back then. And if we continue reading on this page, let me make it bigger. Oh, why is it turning out to be like this? Okay, this is better, I think. So, what does this writing say, guys? What does this writing say? Read with me. The order of this writing appears to belong to a group of Gnostics. Did you catch it? So these were a team of Gnostic people who wrote this document. Who maintained that Jesus Christ was not crucified on the cross. Remember when we say to you, Muhammad was nothing but a copy-paste machine, stealing works from others, stealing works from Galen. We mentioned Galen today, right? Instead, the text says that Simon of Cyrene was mistaken for Jesus. What did the Quran say? Someone else appeared to them uh, that he was crucified instead of Jesus, right? It appeared unto them. So someone else was crucified, right? So, instead, the text says that Simon of... So, someone else was mistaken for Jesus and crucified in his place. Did you catch it? Jesus is described as standing by and laughing at their ignorance. Did you catch it? <laughs> Copy-paste works from others. Asatir al awwali So, this was nothing but a Gnostic writing. That we can 
throw away in the garbage bin like the Quran. And as you see the proof is in front of you where Muhammad got his lies from. From, like I said, the second treatise of the great set. This was a really famous, guys, we know about these Gnostic writings. Famous Gnostic writings who used to circle around the Mediterranean Sea. And Muhammad, don't forget, Muhammad was a merchant working on the Khadija. So he, together with Waraqa ibn Nawfal, that we mentioned earlier, he used to write books in Arabic. Did you catch it? So Waraq ibn Nawfal had access. Waraq ibn Nawfal had access to Aramaic books that he used to write in Arabic. So Muhammad had access to these books, like the Injil, like the second treatise of the Great Set, like the work of Galen that was translated by Sergius of Rashaina. Right? You see that? Boom on your face, Muslims. Eat it, swallow it. Don't forget to chew. Do we have any imam? Uh-oh. So you see, guys, why I needed to address this to finish my refutation of this ayah. I wasn't finished last time. You see it? This is why. So, you know, I know Christian Prince and others love to talk about this ayah. But sometimes I feel, and you know, guys, I love my dear brother in Christ, Christian Prince, amazing guy. He is one of the best. Right? You, you just heard it from me too. He's one of the best. But sometimes I feel that he does not finish it. So, he needs to show you where Muhammad got it from. Others need to show you where Muhammad got this ayah from. Guys, almost all the Quran is stolen work. And the proof is in front of you. Muhammad lived in the 6th and 7th century. The second treatise of the great set came from the 3rd century. So Muhammad had access to these works. These were Aramaic writings. Muhammad had access to these books. We know about them. We know where Muhammad got it from. And the proof is in front of you. Because if you go to a lot of Muslim scholars, they will say it was Simon of Cyrene. Where do, they, where do you think they got it from? From these books. Right? No, I can't. I can't. Uh... Talk like Zakir Naik. I mean, CP, he's much better than me. Brother, sister. <laughs> no, I can't do it, guys. Sorry. I can't, I, I can't do it. Right? Do we have any Imam? Do we have the honor with the presence of an Ustaz from Indonesia? Yeah. Frog saying, it's great to know where Muhammad actually got some of his knowledge from. Well, he got it, like we said, from Al-Harith ibn Kelda, who studied from this medical school, as we mentioned, Junda Shapur, in Persia, right? And there, in that school, they used to teach their medical students from the books of Galen, who was wrong, remember? He was wrong. Modern science proved that he was wrong. He said, like we mentioned earlier, first the bones are developed. First the bones, then the flesh gets covered around the bones. Right? Sorry, the bones are, are being covered by the flesh. So first the bones are developed, then the flesh covers the bones. But we showed you from modern science that the bones and the flesh grow simultaneously so galen was wrong the quran is wrong muslims please leave this copy paste man-made 
cult. It's not even worthy to be called religion, guys. It's nothing but a cult copying from works from others. Copying from the great Seth, the works of the great Seth. Gnostic writing. Right? Please, guys, don't forget to download this video. Download it. Copy stuff from this today's teaching. If you like some parts, take them out and upload them on your social media accounts. The truth must go out. Help me to help you. And don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. And also click on the notification bell to receive notification when we go live, like today. Do we have any Muslim? Do you have any question? Where are the Muslim Imams when you need them? Huh? Where are they? Lord of mercy. See how easy it is, guys, to refute the Quran and Islam and the fake prophet of Islam if you actually care to study? Right? Knowledge, we have always said, and we will always say, knowledge is Islam's worst nightmare. And we should thank Allah for the internet, guys. Because today we can find everything online. Right? I think the Imams are busy pimping out their Muslim girls for muta, right? Too busy doing business. It's business time, right? Yeah, Prophet Google, peace be upon him. The praise of Allah, peace be upon him. Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? Are there any questions, guys? Or should we wrap this up? Yeah, Muslims ran away. What can we do, guys? Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do when they come for you? Yeah, internet, guys, you see internet is actually is the best inventions that what could have happened to us because islam is dying because of internet our work our teaching is helping a lot of people in indonesia I'm, i got a lot of messages from indonesian people right they are thanking us for our work these people are in need guys if you're an indonesian if you happen to know Indonesian, download our videos, translate them. I know it's a lot of work. I know. You have no clue how much study, how much hours we put in our research. You have no clue, my friends. But if you don't at least sweat a little to help just one soul, one soul, guys, we know what the Bible says. If one soul accepts Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, there is a big, huge celebration in heaven. So help just one soul in your life. I'm not asking to help ten. Help one. Translate our work, guys. We are putting a lot of time and work in our study and research. Download our videos. I know we, we can be very lazy. Human beings are lazy. But don't be a lazy Christian. Please. Don't do it for me. Don't do it for me. Do it for yourself. Do it for others. Guys, I really put a lot of time today to do research. You, need, you know how many, how many hours this cost me? But it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to show you. 
that the Quran is nothing but lies. To show you that there is nothing called miracles or scientific miracles in the Quran. Right? Yeah, I think guys, the more we get known, the more countries like Pakistan, Afghanistan are putting major blocks on our YouTube channels, our videos, right? But there's something called VPN, right? Use VPN, right? They can never block you when you use VPN. You will have always access to all the websites, all the blocked videos, right? Muslims, please wake up. Today we showed you that if we can show you just one error, that means the Quran is garbage. It's not from God, not from the true God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And as we showed you, we showed you many errors, right? We showed you how Muhammad was stealing works of others before him. How he stole the work of Galen. And Galen was wrong. Right? Galen was wrong. And since Muhammad got the work from Galen, same claim that we can find in the Quran, and he got it from this guy, uh, let me go back. Right? Since he got it from this guy, Al Harith ibn Kalda or Kalada, who got it from Galen, right? Remember? The translations of Galen started to appear here, especially in this medical school where Al Harith ibn Kalada or Kalda or Kalda, whatever you want to call him, he studied here and the work of Galen was get, getting taught from, right? You see? And we showed you that this guy, Ibn Kalada or Qalda or whatever you want to call him, he became a companion, a Sahabi of Muhammad. He even became family. So now you understand how Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam, the fake Prophet of Islam, got to work from Kalan. How he had access to the work of game because he used to sit down with Al Harith ibn Kalada or Kalda or Qal Qalda, whatever you want to call him as an Arab. He was teaching Muhammad about the work of Galen. Right? And this guy stayed for 20 years with Muhammad. 20 years! He became family. Uh, Jen Hao is has has a question. Yes, you can ask a question. What's your question? Um, someone is saying last Jedi is saying Galen. I was late. Who is he? My friend, uh, you can rewatch the video. But in a nutshell, we had a couple of guys. There was someone called Hippocrates. He made some claims about the embryo stages. Right? He made some claims. Then later, 100 years later, Aristotle came and he said, no, this Greek scientist, this guy is wrong. And he made some claims. Then after him, Galen came to play, another Greek scientist, and he said both are wrong. Both Hippocrates and Aristotle are wrong. And he made the claim, first you get the bones, then the bones are covered by flesh and when we went to modern science we showed you that this is false Galen was wrong right Galen was wrong you see a red cross here Galen was wrong because both flesh and bones are grown simultaneously did you catch it so the Quran was wrong because the Quran make the same claim as 
Galen. Right? Did you catch it? That's basically today's teaching in a nutshell. So news flesh to our Muslim friends, bones and flesh are developed at the same time. But the Quran got it all wrong. Right? And when Muslims say, what about Dr. Keith Moore? You know, go on YouTube. You will see thousands and thousands of videos mentioning Dr. Keith Moore. Muslims love to talk about this guy. But this guy says the Quran pretty much copied from the works of Galen in his book. We gave you the book which came before Muhammad and Islam. So the conclusion, this sequence is scientifically wrong, right? Which is described in the Quran. Galen said these embryo stages 500 years before the Quran, right? Since Muhammad got it from Galen, we can conclude that Muhammad is a liar and a deceiver and there are no miracles in the Quran. And if we can show you one error and we showed you the error, just one error means Quran is not from God. Because if Allah is God, Allah cannot make errors. God does not do errors. So Quran is nothing but a garbage book. Thank you, Mary Lee. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> uh, Lula saying, RC, can I ask? When I was a child and I was still a Muslim, Abdul, I was often told about Sirat al Mustaqim bridge. Uh, do you mean that the bridge that you have to cross as a Muslim? That's what you mean? Is that what you mean, my friend? Is that what you mean? Well, according to the Quran, let, let me tell you a little secret. If we go to Surat Ali Amran, chapter 3, ayah 185, we can find the following. Every soul will taste death. Question. Question. When a soul tastes death, what does that mean? Help me to help you guys in the chat. When a soul dies, a soul dies. What does that mean? The soul will go to hellfire, right? So every soul, every Muslim soul will go to hellfire. Boom. Did you catch it? So every Muslim will see hellfire with his own eyes. And if you are lucky, Allah might save you from hellfire. Yes. What? Yes, Lula. Did you catch it? So, again, according to the Quran, Surah Ali Amran, Ali Amran, chapter 3, ayah 185. Every soul will taste death. Well, we know our body dies, right? When you are born, then you die, your body will go inside the grave, right? But what about the soul? The Quran says, Every soul, not everybody, every soul will taste that. A soul cannot die, right? But when, it's, when, when you say a soul dies, that means the soul, when it dies, that means it goes to hellfire, not to paradise, right? It will not go to God, it will go to hell, where Satan lives, right? So, the proof is in front of you, that happens with every Muslim. So when you die, you will go to hell. Every Muslim will go to hellfire. I mean, why, wouldn't you, why do you want to be a Muslim and go to hellfire? Why? And only if you are lucky, Allah will save you from hellfire. To be honest guys, if I read this and I care about my soul, I will not stay for a split second in Islam. Right? 
if we go to chapter 19, 71. If we go there and we continue reading, just a second. There is none of you who will not pass over it. This is the degree your Lord must fill. So every Muslim will see hellfire. You see that? Hellfire is described for every Muslim. Then we will deliver those who are devout. You see that? I mean, this is not my Quran. This is your Quran. Did you catch it? You will see hellfire as a Muslim with your own eyes. But if you're lucky, Allah will deliver you out of hell. Yep. And the proof is in front of you. And we showed you, right? From the last ayah, that every Muslim, his soul will go to hellfire. Why do you want to be a Muslim in this satanic code? Right? The only promise that Allah can promise you is that you will go to hellfire. What kind of religion is this? Is not a religion. Is this a religion? You will, you will, you are sure you will go to hellfire. What did Abu Bakr say? Even with one foot in paradise, I still fear the deception of Allah. Guy, guys, this is the number one guy after Muhammad, right? Abu Bakr saying, even when with one foot in Jannah, I still fear the deception of Allah. That means Allah can still put him in hellfire. Even if he is in, in, in the Islamic brothel, sexual prostitution place of Allah. He still fears the Makr of all the deception of all god bless you uh, ferit tasamo god bless you do we have any muslim do we have any muslim who can refute our today's teaching Like we said, if Galen is wrong, the Quran is wrong because they make the same claim. You see it? We fashion, then finished with the little lump into bones, then clothed the bones with flesh. And that's what Galen said too in his study. He was a Greek scientist, right? And he made a false claim. Because, you know, back then, 1900 years ago, you know, there was not many work to, to learn from, right? People were, you know, not, not that developed as today's modern teaching, right? Modern teaching, you know, we have big, better tools, we have computers, we have a lot of stuff that can show us that unfortunately these amazing scientists back then were actually wrong but we know muhammad got their ideas from people like galen right he stole their ideas and when he was fabricating ayahs he made the same mistakes like galen right And we showed you that even today's scientists call the Quran nothing but copies of Galen. Right? So Muslims, where is the miracle of the Quran? Where is it? Huh? When we ask the Imams, what do Imams say, guys? What do Imams say? Remember? <laughs> Right. Lord of mercy. Where are the Imams? Do we have any Ustaz? 
Do we have any Ustaz? Daniel Waya, that's what the Imams uh, teach. When we ask these questions, they say, blah, 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 don't ask questions, haram, astaghfirullah. That's the answer. Blah, 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 blah. Most of the time, when, if you are a Muslim, you go to a mosque, I kid you not. When you go ask questions, they say, Astaghfirullah, Akhi, don't ask questions. It will leave you out of Islam. Even the Quran says, don't ask questions. Chapter 5, thank you for the ayah, my friend. Guys, keep our admins in your prayers. They are always doing an amazing job. Keep them in your prayers. Keep me in your prayers, guys. We need to destroy this satanic cult, this man-made cult by Muhammad. So the Imams, right, the Imams, blah, 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 saying, oh, you believe, repeating after Muhammad, ask not of things if they were made unto you. Don't ask questions. But if you ask of them when the Quran is being revealed, they will be made known unto you. Blah, blah, blah. Don't ask questions, my friend. Don't ask questions. And when we ask Allah, Allah is silent, like the Imams. In the meantime, guys, Allah is still eating his eggs. Why didn't Allah? I mean, come on, guys. We went today, we went to a very specific, very, very specific topic, right? And that's the flesh and the bones, right? But why didn't Allah mention the egg? Where is the egg, Allah? I think Allah was too hungry, guys. Allah was too hungry for the egg. So he ate the egg. Why didn't Allah... Why didn't Allah mention the egg? He immediately starts to talk about semen and how semen becomes a blood clot dead blood clot and then he continues on to flesh i mean where is the egg of the women man akhi haram the imam will say haram akhi don't ask questions don't ask questions don't ask what allah did to the egg of the woman i think allah was actually really hungry that morning when he gave this ayah uh sorry this ayah to muhammad Allah was too hungry. He ate the egg. Scrambled eggs, yeah. Allah loves scrambled eggs. Mashallah. Uh, Lula, I, uh, if you are interested about that, about the punishment of the grave, go watch my last video. I talked about it, okay? So, guys, actually, I really addressed man of top, many topics in my video. So, if you have a question or you want uh, to, something to be addressed, go search between my videos. A lot of topics we already addressed, right? Yeah, so check out the last video. Do we have any Imam? Do we have any Ustaz? Mayday, Mayday. Where are the Imams, guys? Come on, man. Where are they? Mayday, Mayday. As you said, you know, I ain't charged with anything. I couldn't see the view anymore. Was he mumbo? What? Is that it? Imams, is that what you're saying to us? No answer. No answer, guys. Where are the Imams when you need them?
Did you like that movie, Tamara? I'm sure you love that movie, right? I, I, I don't remember the name of that movie, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yes, there are many people in the Arabic section of uh, YouTube who are doing our work. But, you know, unfortunately, those people don't do it in English. So, not many people like me, Christian Prince, or David Wood, or Sam Shamoun, or Sierra International, or the, our friends like Hatun Tash, Jay Smith. You know, there are a lot of people actually doing what we do, but not many. It's not enough. Yeah, Al Fadi from Sierra International. He's a Saudi who became a Christian, right? So he knows Arabic like me. Right? But unfortunately, they don't do enough in English, right? There are many Arabic-speaking Christians who are doing it in the Arabic world, right? Like Zakaria Butrus, like Brother Rashid. There's another guy called Al-Walid, right? Many, many, but you don't know them, guys, because, you know, you don't know Arabic. You don't go to the live shows or TV stations. Uh, you know, Zakaria Butros has his own uh, TV station, right? And almost every day, live on TV, he spanks Muhammad and he spanks Islam, right? He is one of the first who started all these guys, Zakaria Butros. I think he's, he, he even started before Christian Prince. Yeah, he started before Christian Prince. Zakaria Butros guys used to stay like us, like Christian Prince, like me on Paul Talk. I'm a Paul Talk guy, right? I'm a very old school Paul Talk guy. Christian Prince, he, before going on YouTube, he used to also come on Paul Talk. Zakaria Butros, we used to debate sheikhs and imams back then. Back then, the shiuch, the imams, had the courage to face us. But they were getting spanked. But the more they got spanked, the more they got uh, scared, right? They started to know, hey, we can't defend Islam anymore. So they stopped debating us slowly, slowly, slowly. Yeah, Zakaria Butros, uh, like Phil just put it in text. You can uh, see a lot of videos in English about uh, his teaching. He's an amazing guy. He's a Coptic priest, a Christian Coptic priest, and they put 60 million on his head, 60 million dollar. If a Muslim catch, captures him, he will get 60 million. Yeah. Coptic Christian priest, yes. Wonderful guy. Amazing, amazing guy. Do we have any Muslim? Yeah, well, uh, kenosis. Right? If you can't refute people, if you can't refute Christians, spanking Islam and Muhammad, so the best way to do is to deceive people, you know, using a false name, under a false nick, trying to act like us, right? Even on Discord, you had a couple of Muslims using my name, right, on Discord, to deceive people, acting like it's me. <laughs> So yeah, when they can't refute you, they will use deception. Take your nickname, take your identity, use a false identity to deceive people. Right? And we know jihad is a war, and war is deception. Right? You need to deceive people, and that's what Islam is. Allah khayrul makkarin wa makkaru wallahu khayrul makkarin. Right? Allah is the best of deceivers. So if Allah is the deceiver, that means his slaves, the Abduls, who suffer from Abdulism, are deceivers too. Right? Guys, make sure to re-watch my today's video. Download it, re-watch it. If you just joined in, you missed a lot. And I think this was another amazing 
teaching. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Since we are out of Muslims, I think it's best to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed our today's uh, teaching. Download our videos. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Also click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. Help me to help you guys. Download our videos. Upload parts. I know it's a big video, a long video. But at least help me to help you. Help one soul, guys. Download a video. Put it online. Maybe one Muslim can see the video. And leave this man-made satanic cult. Thank you for watching, guys. God bless you and your families. Keep us in your prayers. We need your support. Help me to help you guys. As we showed you today, Islam is nothing but a copy-paste religion, stealing works of others, stealing the works of Galen. And we showed you that Galen got it wrong, right? And because Muhammad stole the work of Galen and put it in the Quran, saying that Allah created mankind and then the bones were developed and the bones get covered by flesh, which is a lie. And we showed you that modern science actually refutes the claim of the Quran. It totally refutes the Quranic claim because flesh and bones are developed simultaneously, which means at the same time, at the same moment, flesh and bones. So the Quran of Allah is wrong, right? Did you catch it? And the proof is in front of you. Modern science is Islam's most and biggest nightmare. God bless you guys. Thank you for watching. And hopefully we will see, Lord willing, see another again very soon. God bless you. Jesus is Lord and Islam is a man-made copy-paste cult. Thank you for watching. God bless.